Thank you so much. That was just great. And now it is my honor to invite Court Hassinger, a licensed practitioner who will give the lesson for the day. Court. Good morning, everyone. So the topic for the month of September is gratitude. And that's what I'm going to be talking about this morning. Um, let me start by asking this question. Have you ever known you were going to receive a gift in advance before it was actually given to you? Perhaps someone said that they were going to buy you something wonderful. And whether it be goosebumps or butterflies, you felt that excitement throughout your body. And perhaps you said thanks to them in advance and you expressed how grateful you were before you actually received the gift. Well, that is what gratitude is all about. It's a state of being. We know that our words, thoughts, and mental attitude have a tremendous vibratory force. And this attitude of gratitude is a celebration. It's how we should start our day. Gratitude is a creative energy that creates more for us to be grateful for. Gratitude takes us from where we are to where we want to be. When we are grateful for who we are and what we have, we will then become more of who we are and have more of what we have. We increase what we praise by focusing on the good, and Abraham Lincoln said it this way, we can complain about rose bushes that have thorns, or we can rejoice about thorn bushes that have roses, right? Now, getting into this spiritual habit can be hard for the average person who is experiencing lack or limitation. So, just because you have the appearance of insufficient funds doesn't mean that today has been canceled. Perception is a choice, not a fact. The one who understands spiritual law is undisturbed by appearances. And no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. I'm referring to those people, places, or things that may not look so great to the reasoning mind. Because the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem. In this teaching, we recognize that um, the mind is having three parts of the triune nature. The conscious mind, the subjective mind, and the superconscious or divine mind. Spirit or conscious mind is our human reasoning mind. It sees life as it appears to be. It sees both negative and positive demonstrations, and what it focuses on, it then impresses that thought on the subjective mind. And you will never see the positive things ahead of you if you keep looking and focusing on the negative things behind you. Next, we have the subjective mind. It's simply a power that knows only to do without knowing why. It's a producer. It's an impersonal force that produces the will of the spirit or conscious mind. It has no choice but to create whatever the conscious mind is thinking. Lastly, we have the superconscious or divine mind. It's the God mind that we are all a part of. It's the realm of perfect ideas, and that is where we want to be grateful for. Even when our conscious mind doesn't want us to see it. In the superconscious God mind is the divine design, or perfect pattern for each of us that, we, that was spoken about by Plato. A grateful mind is a great mind that attracts to it great things. And this is what all those Greek guys meant when they said, know thyself. Get to know the triune nature of who you really are. Think of your conscious mind as the director and the subjective mind as the producer who takes instructions from the director. It's like making a movie. So, are you living in a happy, award-winning movie? Are you in an okay B movie? Or are you going rogue and living in the worst movie ever made? <laughs> All because you want to do everything yourself. Sometimes this perfect pattern or perfect picture is revealed to us as a flash, coming across the screen of our consciousness as an unattainable goal, something too good to be true. 
But that is just our ego or conscious mind lying to you because it really could be true. It is our true destiny being flashed before our eyes as a coming attraction from the infinite intelligence which is within all of us. And it's so sad when we just don't want to recognize it or believe it. So, now, whenever I hear someone say it's too good to be true, I say no it isn't. Believing makes it so. So, just say thank you and be grateful and accept it. This type of thinking is very apparent to me whenever I watch an awards show. I think the Emmys are coming up this week or next week. So we've all seen this. The winner gets up on stage and thanks everyone. They thank their wives, their parents, their school teacher, their peers, and so on and so on. And sometimes they are so annoying that the orchestra has to start playing to make them stop and get off the stage. These are the people who make the Oscar or Emmy Awards four hours long, and the rest of us have to wait up till midnight to hear what the best show was. <laughs> However, despite how annoying this can be, it's very clear to me that these, these people saw that flash, they went for that dream, and then they expressed endless gratitude to everyone. <clears throat> And it doesn't matter if I didn't like the show or movie that they were even in or their performance. I can just tell they are grateful for the opportunity that they had and that others appreciated what they did. And that's the thing about gratitude. We all don't have to like the same thing. We get to choose our own experience. The great artist Henry Matisse said this, inspiration is around every corner, so just take a walk. We get to direct and produce our own life. And aren't you thankful about that? That is something to be grateful for. Look at the diversity in people and nature on this planet. We are all unique, and it is our divine right to experience the best we can be. Having an attitude of gratitude is what happens to us when we allow ourselves to recognize how good we really are. Just be thankful even when you don't see what you want right away. And that is where faith comes in. If you want to feel rich, just count the things you already have that money can't buy. It's so much easier for the average person to have fear rather than faith. I'm in sales. In my coaching classes at work, I am taught to consider multiple no's as a stepping stone to yes and that failure is just a bruise, not a tattoo. Faith is an effort of the will and requires a disciplined mind. There are no idle thoughts. All thought creates form on some level. So therefore, if you're going to be thinking anyway, you might as well think big, right? We all know this teaching um, that we have free will. And the divine mind can't force its way back into our thinking because that would violate our free will. So, being the director of our own life literally means taking responsibility for our own stinking thinking thoughts. All we have to do is to use this power for good. Sadly, yet, most of us don't. This power can guide us to a different perception of reality, one that is based on love rather than fear. When we encounter challenging people or events in our lives, we get to choose to suffer or be happy. Never waste your time trying to explain yourself to people who are committed to misunderstanding you. Some people come into our lives as blessings, and some people come into our lives as lessons. So, sometimes I literally say to myself, do you look like the kind of person I'm gonna regret knowing? I'm not proud, but I, I do think that sometimes. And there are people who come into our lives with an expiration date. Not everyone is meant to be with us forever. Learn to respond accordingly and be grateful for each encounter. How, treat, how people treat you is their karma, and how we react is ours. Once again, we attract what we focus on. So if you give obstacles and limitation your undivided attention, they're going to grow worse and worse. What we give to others, we give to ourselves. And what we withhold from others, we withhold from ourselves. 
In her book, Florence Shin uses a metaphor known as signs of land, and it goes something like this. Before Columbus reached America, he saw birds in the air and twigs in the water, which told him land was near, and that gave him faith to keep going. And so it is with a demonstration, but oftentimes we mistake the twigs for the demonstration itself, and we get disappointed. With a negative mindset, you only see negative things happen. Yet positive things happen all the time. Alter your mind to see the positive things. We don't see the surprise that is just over the horizon. And a surprise is one of the greatest gifts life can grant us. Things are not always as they seem. The first appearance deceives many. Don't judge by appearances. There is a Buddhist proverb that goes something like this. Change how you see and see how you change. So, like Columbus, it takes faith to keep moving on. It takes a deep inner knowing that we are more than enough to call forth what we desire and deserve. You are not stuck where you are unless you decide to be. We decide what we want to see before we actually see it. We can find, and in fact we will find, whatever it is we focus on. So, be careful about what you are thinking all day long. What you focus on, you will get more of. You know, gratitude is infectious. I always say that whenever Reverend Loretta gives me a talk, sometimes the topic that I'm told to talk about is beyond my comfort zone, and I have to do research on the subject before I can give the talk, and that includes gratitude. Well, guess what? I now have become more grateful. When we know we are magnificent with an infinite abundance of love and power to give, we tend to start behaving that way by expressing gratitude. So I am now thankful for everything I have, and I'm thankful for everything I want that is yet to come. So start by being grateful today. Someone said this, there are seven days in the week and someday isn't one of them. So do it now because lost time is never found again. And Tony Robinson said this, if you talk about it, it's a dream. If you envision it, it's possible. But if you schedule it, it's real. So in the morning, while you're still in bed, make an affirmation upon waking up. I, again, I learned this from Florence Shin. And I, you may notice I quote Florence Shin a lot. Um, it was one of the first books I started reading when I you know, began my journey into metaphysics. So Florence Shin says this, Thy will be done this day. Today is a day of completion. I give thanks for this perfect day. Miracles shall follow miracle, and wonders shall never cease. Um, later, when you do your mental treatment work in the morning, start by actually creating your day. And I learned this one from the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? I am taking this time to create my day, and I thank God for hearing this prayer. I am infecting the quantum field with what I am now creating. This day I have always been, and so on and so on, based on what is important to you. Then followed by, show me a sign today that you have paid attention to any of these things that I have created, and bring them in a way that I won't expect, so that I am surprised at my ability to be able to experience these things, and make it so that I will know it has come from thee. As you know, this teaching focuses on seeing the good in life in four major areas. In Science of Mind, we call it the square of life, which includes health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. And the randomness of life on this plane is ruled by the law of averages. Statistics tell us that a certain percentage of us will be in a traffic accident, may be impacted by the hurricane in Florida, or some of us will have a heart attack. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how we respond to it. This teaching removes us from the random law of averages, and for that I am grateful. So gratitude is a celebration. It is witnessing life with acceptance and joy. It changes the world that you see. So have a nice day, unless of course your ego has already made other plans. Okay? Think about that. And when you are clear, you know what to let go of. And that may include bitterness and resentment. 
They're one of the biggies that I struggle with. Resentment will weigh you down. You cannot have gratitude and resentment at the same time. So become proficient in the art of letting go. An attitude of gratitude will assist you in, let, in getting through those dark times. And joy is what happens to us when we allow ourselves to recognize how good things really are. Know that there is nothing that can block your good from being expressed through you and as you. Gratitude motivates us to actively see things to be grateful for. And remember, what we are seeking is seeking us. My little neighbor is a six-year-old who started school this week. Sometimes I babysit. Consequently, I have learned to love and be grateful for story times because I get him away from his tablet and all those little games that kids are looking at all the time. So I will close with this quote by Cinderella. Choosing the right shoe can make all the difference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coy, for that wonderful, wonderful lesson. You, we have a lot of takeaways from that. Thank you so much. And now uh, it's time for our collection, and I'm going to do spiritual mind treatment. So here we go. Oh, yes, he's got an engagement, and so I'm going to continue the service. Thank you, Court. Let's, let's go. Recognizing that there is but one power, one presence, one God, we are eternally grateful for the divine guidance and the divine power and presence of God in each one's life bringing forth greater good, greater health, and greater wellness. And as we let go, we let the power of God guide and direct us this day and every day. With gratitude for the divine love of God, I release this treatment into the law of mind and action, where it's accepted and acted upon at once, and so it is. treatment for the monthly prayer for September and I have August and we'll read it with feeling okay I have August today I'll wait till you. Does everyone have September now? Do we all have September? Raise your hand if you do not have September. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Are we set? Okay. I am grateful that my mind is a center of divine operation and in this mind expands my creativity and self-expression. I am a free, creative individual inspired by intelligent ideas right now, right now, in now. Thank you for this life, spirit. Thank you for my life, and so it is. And now we'll have some more music from Julie and James. Thank you. Now is the time for standing and cheating. Okay. And I'll start with you. All right. Now is, uh, now is also the time for affirming what Court was just talking about, which was gratitude. Yes, sir. Um, we are going to sing a little I Am So Grateful. Some of you may know, some of you may not, but you should pick it up as we go. Um, and if you find it difficult to sing along, just shake along. 
Turn the shakers in there, Lord. Now we're going to take some uh, call out at, when we get to that point for some people to give you an opportunity to call out something you're grateful for and we'll incorporate it in the Things like love, peace, joy, and other monosyllabic okay. things. Okay. 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 So how are we going with the shakers? Are we Movers still happy? We're all moving. Okay, so this is I am so grateful, so grateful. I am so grateful for all the love. Insert what you want to say there when you get there. I am so grateful, so grateful. I'm grateful for all the love that I have. We're all going to do love. Yep. Love, 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 Thank you. 
We're so grateful. I am so grateful. New York Community Center for Spiritual Living. Very grateful. 